Hey everyone, Techni here with a review of the Keychron K2 version 2 mechanical keyboard. All right, so if some of you have been here for a while, you all know I reviewed the original K2 keyboard a while back right there. And some of you may be here just curious, what is the difference from the old one and then now the V2? And I don't wanna waste any of you guys' time, so if you're curious about those differences, the only differences are, and you know what? I say only very lightly, because one of the differences here, or the improvements, are the one massive improvement I requested on the original one, if any of you remember right there. But anyways, so we have Bluetooth 5.1 on this guy, a dedicated LED for our caps lock before it wasn't there, so whenever you hit the caps, it lights up right there, so you know, but the biggest improvement is the incline. The old one was just this big chunky board, sat flat and sat down and, and for me, it was unusable. It was just like you needed a wrist rest, you needed to prop it up somehow or other. But anyways, you have that dedicated, you know, implemented ergonomic incline on this guy and some pop out feet as well. But anyways, if you're still here to check out this keyboard, let's take a look at it. So inside your box, you can get a manual and then a quick start postcard right here that kind of gives you all the shortcuts. Very handy, especially if you decide to change your keycaps on this guy. You can get your detached attachable USB-C cable. As you can see, it has that L bracket right there. Nice heavy duty and braided. You can get a keycap puller here and then some replacement keycaps if you want to set it up to like a Windows layout right there. It comes out of the box set up in a Mac layout with your command and options. And then of course you get your keyboard with a dust cover. So let's go ahead and talk about that number one improvement. I'm, I'm probably doing this too wrong, right? I think I'm supposed to save the best for last, right? So you guys stick around for longer than three minutes. But anyways, I gotta talk about the best improvement here because it is just absolutely phenomenal. And it completed the board. Again, if you go back and watch my old video, I recommend you not because I, you know, I learned a lot since then. But anyways, again, you talk about the board. It's a big, chunky board. You kind of got that real rugged look and everything, metal frame. You can get it without the metal frame, by the way. But just kind of picture this, a little bit thicker, and then without that incline on the bottom. It was just hard to use, but now you got the incline, perfect stock ergonomic right there. You also have two pop-out feet right there, rubber grips on the bottom and everything. So whichever size you need or angle, it's gonna suit you perfect now. Again, that is as minor as it sounds, like you kind of sit here like, well, why wasn't it done on the first one? You know what I mean? Sure, it, it should have been, I agree, you know? But again, it's nice that we now have this and it's such a great improvement. So now talking about the layout of the K2 right here, the perfect layout I believe for again a productive keyboard or a gaming keyboard right there. You have all your functions and features on it. A little bit tough to find a replacement set of keycaps for these guys. There are out there. Definitely the HK Gaming ones we recently checked out. Those will fit on here perfectly fine. But again, it's so nice. You have all your shortcuts up there. Fantastic for us Mac users. Again, this has been my main work keyboard for my Mac products right there. Works out fantastic. But some of you might be thinking, how about the K6 that we recently reviewed? That 65% layout. Again, as you can see here, the only difference is you have that dedicated F row. On the K6, you have function one and function two over over here again you kind of get that dedicated row so is that much of a difference or is that needed for you again it's personal preferences for you to decide right there i like the k2 how you have the uh, settings right there and your shortcuts bam right there at your fingers now as far as using the keychron k2 or pretty much any keychron keyboard same controls on the side over here you have bluetooth off and then cable and then windows android and then mac over here usb connection on the side which is why that cable comes angled so kind of a stinker if you use custom cables it will stick out a little bit right there but again, those are controls, very simple to use. I love it. And as far as setting up Bluetooth, it's function one, two, or three, as far as the three devices you have right there, and it syncs up perfectly. Instantly right to all of my Apple products, whether it be an iPad, an iPhone, or an iMac right there. But now one stinker I noticed about the Bluetooth right here, or maybe it's just a keyboard or whatever, it goes into that sleep mode and shuts itself down after you're not using it for a certain amount of time. And whenever I press a key to wake it back up, it takes a second, bam, and then it's up there. I'm just like, it's not taking up my whole day. Seriously, it's probably like a second, you know, and then it registers being active there. Now, kind of remembering about that Logitech G915 TKL we recently reviewed, the one thing I loved about that is instantly when you press a key right there, it's automatically right on your screen, no waiting or anything like that. So again, as cheesy as that sounds, a little bit of a stinker. Now you do also have RGB on the K2 right here and you control it right by the light button on the top right there. Now let me tell you what, me personally, me complaining here, I don't like that stinking light button now. You know, I, I used to like it, but I don't like it now because I accidentally press it. And again, to get to my solid color, if you cycle the RGB, it goes right back to that preset white. So then I got to cycle it all the way back to my solid color, then get it back to my red. So again, it, it just annoyed me because I'd accidentally press it and then I have to cycle through and then I get it set back to my solid again. 
me complaining here totally, but again, but again, but again, but again, it just drove me crazy. Now you can get the K2 with PBT keycaps. I believe there's only maybe one or two different variations of the color on it. They look pretty cool, kind of dark color. But again, it's only a $10 increase for that. So I think that is a well worth upgrade. Again, if it's something you want, you get to pick. But again, it's only $10 to upgrade. Now, as far as the keycaps on the K2 here, they are the basic ABS keycaps. A little bit high pitch sound on them. We are using Gatoron red switches here. Now this is the best part of Keychron keyboards right here. I mean, there's just so much actually in Keychron keyboards. If you watched any of my other reviews, I absolutely love them. The value, the build, the quality, the features, the simplicity, everything just screams it right here, right? This keyboard here comes in at a hundred bucks. It got Gatoron red switches. And again, with that metal frame on it, it just gives it that girth. It's not flexing, it's not bowing, nothing like that. It's a solid keyboard. And again, going back to one of my other favorites, the K6 over here, right? The 65% where you lose in that top row. Comes out at the same price. You're talking 89, 99 bucks. Again, you can get it down to I believe 69 bucks without the metal frame, without the RGB and stuff like that. K6, hot swap around $100 price range. K2 is not hot swap. But the K2, you can get 100 bucks and get it right with some PBT keycaps. That is awesome right there with the PBT keycaps. Now you only have, I believe, two styles to choose from for the PBT. Or like I stated, you can get a replacement keycap, some of those HK Gaming ones we just recently reviewed. So the cool thing about, again, the H or the uh, Keychron keyboards here is all the options you have as far as layouts, you know, and then as far as features and builds and everything and price, you can get it for around seven, 70 bucks up to a hundred bucks. It's awesome that you get to pick what you want. You know, I can say, hey, I love this one, but you love this one here, you know what I mean? It's it's so cool to have so many options as far as price and then layout and everything. I stink and love it. I can sit here and go on and on about it all day. It's just, it really screams value. And y'all know I love a value. If there's one thing I can say I wish Keychron would do, as I stated in my other reviews as well, is I wish they started making these in different color options, like maybe just an all white one or an all black one or Heck, go even further with like all red or all blue or something like that. I don't know, but maybe let's start off with just all white, like with the frame being white and everything and the keycaps. I think that would be really cool. Again, kind of implementing that extra bit of personalization. We got the fantastic keyboard with the features and the build and everything. Now let's bring in that personalization, add another 20 bucks. Wow. I mean, I mean, you won't be able to beat it. So wrapping up this review right here, you can pretty much take away my thoughts on the Keychron K2 or heck any of the other Keychron keyboards. I really love them. I love that value, the quality within them. If you're just getting into mechanical keyboards or just want a solid keyboard all around to do schoolwork, you know, just daily browsing stuff and gaming, this screams it. It really does for all those situations. It's not just a gaming keyboard. It's not just a work keyboard. It has everything packed into it. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching my review on the Keychron K2 keyboard here. I hope I can answer some questions if you're looking into this keyboard here or heck any other Keychron keyboards. I'll plug a few more right at the end right here. If you got any questions, just ask down in the comments and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. Hey, I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now.